anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Austin? Doing well, Jared. Happy to be back for a second Thursday in a row. Um, filling in for Kyle, big shoes to fill, but happy to be here for an episode that, um, and hopefully this doesn't make me look, look a little cocky, but an episode that's a lot about me. So uh, happy to be here. Yeah, um, this is a unique episode, um, especially from my perspective, because I, I don't have a whole lot of idea of what's about to happen. Um, if you were listening at the beginning of the year, Austin is sort of our over-unders uh, champion, I guess you could say. Um, if you've ever heard us do the Know Your Enemy section, we always do Austin's over-unders. If, 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 you're, if you're a bit dense and you haven't figured it out yet, this is the same Austin. Um, before the season started, we did preseason over unders and the preseason over unders were exactly what you might expect that to be. It was over unders for the entire season. Um, now Kyle and I did that show and we had a lot of fun and I didn't realize until this week that Austin was actually keeping count. Um, so I'm going to be held accountable. And I, and I don't necessarily yeah. know how to feel about this. Um, even though Kyle's not uh, on the show today, he's uh, still on assignment. Um, we all, we're all we also holding Kyle accountable here. Absolutely. And I, I think the best part about this is that I already know the results because I went through and uh, yeah, yeah. obviously I made the overrunners. I knew what they were. And I went back and listened to the podcast. And um, so sitting here, being giddy, mm. knowing what's about to happen. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Jared gets to sit there. No and idea. Sort of squirm a little bit, and so it, it should be. Uh, it should be a fun episode. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm totally out of control right now, and I'm doing my best to cope with that. So cope. we'll see what happens. Oh seven. Yes. All right. You ready to get started, Jared? Kyle's gonna hack the call. He literally all, all he'd have to do. All he'd have to do, Bulldoggy, is join the room. That's it. <laughs> I, we, maybe he, he didn't never. leave the Discord server. He's just a little busy right now. It's true. All right, Jared, I've got a fun, uh, a fun mini game within the within the game that I also didn't tell you about, so I'm going to spring this on you as well. So obviously, I have the numbers. I also went through. Not only did I check to see if it was over under, but I also recorded the correct amount for every over under. Okay. So as I give you the over under, I want you to tell me what you think the number actually was for this season. Mm. So not not only are you yeah. holding past Jared accountable, now you're going to hold correct. current Jared accountable. That is correct. I figure we should jump both ends right there. Should should, should never have given you power. <laughs> All right. First one that's coming up. Passes thrown by a quarterback not named CJ Stroud. The over under was at 48 and a half. Okay. I'm I'm one, I'm pretty sure I said under, and two, I'm pretty sure it was in fact under. So you said over. I said over. Kyle also said over. It was yeah. under. Kyle yeah. McCord only threw 20 passes on the season, which right. feels extremely low. I mean, obviously last season. Uh, not this, not this season that just passed, but the 2021 season, he had the game where he came in and played the whole game for CJ Stroud. You know, he's, Kyle McCord started that game, but you know, I think he, Miller got a fair number of snaps, and I don't think he played the entire game. Miller, Miller, not Miller. He left for Florida. Oh yeah, it was Jack Miller. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay, it was Miller. Why? Why? Don't don't gaslight uh, me. My, my head immediately went to Braxton and I was like, you're a little off there, pal. Whoa, no, no, uh, no. All right. So you and Kyle were both incorrect on that one. Next one was players with at least one recorded carry on the season. Now this number was set oh, at eight God. and a half. Recorded Obviously, carries? Oh man. How many, how many players, how many players do you think got a carry this season, Jared? If the number was eight and a half. So CJ Stroud, Henderson, Chop. <laughs> Spike says 10. Um, guess. God, there there were okay, hold on. I'm gonna say two quarterbacks, okay. three running backs. Way more than that. Well, well hold on. 
um, uh, three running backs, um, one linebacker, um, oh. one wide receiver slash running back. Um, and then there had to have been an end around or something like that in there mm -hmm. at certain points as well. So I'll say um, two wide receivers, okay. um, a fullback. Like a trip to 10 right there. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's about it. Yeah, so the correct answer is 14. Jeez. Because you're also forgetting Caffey. I am forgetting Caffey. Um, there were, Ibuka obviously did. Um, I'm not sure if it was Marvin Harrison that got one as well. I think Devin Brown had a carry. Um, so that's another one. And then also, remember Mirko on the fake punt, another carry. So Mirko. all of that adds up to being 14. Um, funny enough, Kyle took the over and was correct. You took the under and were incorrect. I don't think that's very no. funny, but okay. Uh, next one. OSU points allowed per game. The number was at 20 and a half. I'm going to tell you, this was my best number that I had in the over-unders. We were a real feast or famine on this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going and to remember, guess. These numbers are based on a 14 game season. So 13, 14 game season. So it did include the postseason. So we, we can't include the, include the Georgia game here. We are including Georgia. Correct. I'm going to say it's over, but not by a lot. That is correct. Um, the number was 20 and a half. We gave up 21 points per game, which pretty decent from last year, but would have liked for it to have been under. I think we improved by just a few points per game. So uh, you and Kyle both got that correct, but it was it was pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and, Honestly, and that, compared to what I think that you do, you know, off the top of your head what it was last year? I want to say it was 23.4, but that mm, could be wrong. Okay. All right. It was somewhere about though. It was somewhere in there. Maybe it was 24.3, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, opposite of that, OSU points scored per game. The number was at 45 and a half. You and Kyle both took the over. Okay. Where do you think it landed? I think it probably went over. It didn't. It landed no. at the under 44.2. So we were a whole 1.3 points per game worse this year than last year, which is Interest. I mean, it makes sense when you think about the fact that we lost Olave, we lost Wilson, but you know, Marvin and lost, had a great season and lost Henderson and lost yeah. um, KJ. God, I one I why why do I always when I can't pull a, pull Hill. his name say KJ Hill, uh, JSN, um, yeah, it yeah, lost the was the game that skewed it. That's a really good point. And Rocker did skew it. Yeah. That's a really good point. Northwestern, where we only scored 10, or how, was it 10 that we scored? I think it was something like that, right? 13? 17? 17, 21. Is right? that? I don't know. It was 21. Seven, I don't, we didn't, we didn't go under 20 all year. No. But yeah, I mean, when you score 21 and your average is 44, that's going to bring the number down quite a bit. So, yeah. Um, the next one I'm also pretty proud of it was wide receiver touchdowns at 38 and a half. Uh, you went under, Kyle went over. Wide receiver touchdowns. Um, I'm gonna say it hit the under. It did hit the under, but it was but 37, it was so it was only a, yeah, it was pretty close. So you know, again, if that Northwestern game goes another way, or if you know, if Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get hurt in the Peach Bowl, you know, if any small things like that happen, I'm I'm just gonna be real with you, Austin. I think this yeah. is an entire exercise in you showing how close your ever unders were. <laughs> no, no, no. It gets much worse. The very I, I, okay. I gathered this as as I was going through, I was like, okay, I'm doing a pretty good job through like the first seven. And then the middle like 14 <laughs> is not not great. It's really not great. So trust me, we'll get there. Cause so, I had the same reaction. I was like, well, this is just gonna be me gloating. And then it's not. <laughs> well, okay. We have to, we need, we need a, we need a through point here, right? So what, what I think we need is the, uh, we, we need a score counter. How, how are Kyle and I doing currently? So I have your total scores at the end. Well, do, um, well, do we have it? Then, but we can do we have it a, tabulated so far? Uh, I can tell you if you give me a second. So we've got, let's see. Kyle has one. So Kyle currently has two. Uh, 
you currently have one. Out of seven? Out of five. Oh, okay. So if uh, if someone in the chat wants to keep track for us, because no, I, I got I, it. I can't do those mental gymnastics. Oh, you got it? All right. I think. Yeah, so currently it is two to one in Kyle's favor. Um, but I'll go ahead and talk about this next one, which is tight end receptions. Uh, that was set at 36 and a half. Now, keep in mind, Ohio State was looking at replacing Ruckert, who was a receiving tight end, someone that, you know, lined up as a receiver most often. You know, we thought that G. Scott would end up having a, a decent little year. Um, so with that in mind, 36 and a half, where do you think it landed? Jared, you and Kyle both took the under. Um, I, pr- I would say under as well. So it hit the over and by a pretty substantial margin, there were actually, maybe it is the year of the tight end. There were 45 catches by tight ends this year, which is pretty substantial. I mean, Stover had 36 by himself, which I, I, whenever I was going through the numbers, that was one of the more surprising ones for me. I agree. Um, Can we get some, uh, can we get some year of the tight end in the chat, boys? Little, little, little year of the tight end in the chat. Thank you. Little, little Yachty. Thank you. Get a little Yachty. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um so so both of you got that one wrong so we're off to a really really go oh. now nah, it's a really good start i'm i'm working on it all right i'm working on I, it I, I see that yeah um next one which pains me to talk about at the very moment but uh ruggles kicking percentage um this was set what? at 92 and on half. earth is this doing i don't know <laughs> okay i don't I don't have the score on. I was trying to put the score on I the screen. It wasn't working. Keep it, they'll keep it in the chat. It's down there. Okay. We got the K equals two and the J equals one. So um, I appreciate like, it. Like I said, this one's a little more difficult, but Ruggles uh, field goal kicking percentage, uh, 92 and a half. Um, also, if you can't see the score because, uh, you know, you're not watching on YouTube, still appreciate you. But still you appreciate you. Still, still want you to check us out on YouTube though. What's, do you know the, is there an exact handle for that, Jared? Or is it just search the Sloopcast? Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com or uh, you, we're also on the Buckeye uh, Huddle Network. Perfect. So we, uh, we so post again, episodes to both of those channels. Cool. Uh, so yeah, Ruggles field goal kicking percentage, 92 and a half. If you remember, his number last season was 97 or 97 and a half. Okay. Um, I think he had a pretty good year, honestly. Over? Well under. It was 85%. Um, really? Fair, you, you and Kyle both took um, the under, so you were correct. So both of you get a point there. But the the issue was that he only and, – and you talked about this in the episode at the beginning of the year, so kudos to you, I guess, on this one, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but you were like, if he misses some early, he's not going to have too many attempts to get it back. And that's yeah. kind of what happened. So he ended up um, being 17 out of 20, which is still a pretty good year. And I think he was 47 of 48 for extra points. But, you know, 17 out of 20 is still 85%. So not quite the 92 and a half that we were looking for. Uh, next one was true linebacker interception. So that would probably be just Cody Simon, uh, Tommy Eichenberg, and Steel Chambers at six and a half. Uh, you so- and Kyle both did take the under. Say that say that one again for me. Sorry. Yeah, true linebacker interception. So that's Cody Simon, Tommy yeah, yeah. Eckenberg, and uh, Steel Chambers, and uh, it was at six and a half. I think that went over. No, it was well under. It was only three. Really? Uh, Steel, Steel Chambers had two, and Tommy Eckenberg had one. Cody Simon did not have any. I mean, and you talked about this as well. Yeah, so, there's not. Uh, there wasn't a lot of linebackers flowers. on the field. Exactly. Yeah. A lot more safeties on the field, you know, when they're playing typically three safeties or maybe an end uh, and play some other linebacker. When you only have two linebackers on the field, it's a lot harder for them to get turnovers. I still think the linebackers were a big part of the turnovers we had this year. Part of that was the secondary sure. struggles. But, but you know, Steel Chambers in particular had a really good year getting turnovers specifically. I think he forced some fumbles as well. So six and a half was a lofty number to go for, especially for the linebackers. But I'm, I'm still pretty happy with the three that they got. Yeah. Um... I'm I, I yeah I I don't think that that's their job. 
quite no, frankly. It's, it's, it's not. Yeah, I mean, dropping back into zone, maybe sometimes you'd like for them to get one or two, but they didn't get one or two. They got three. So Yeah. Uh, next one is team sacks. The over-under was set at 44 and a half. Uh, do you remember what you went for on this one? I don't remember what I went for, but it has to be under, right? I don't think they yeah, got that many. Way under. Yeah, it's, what, it's well under. It's 34. And uh, yeah, indeed, everyone did take the over. Um, the idea was the defense will be a lot more revamped and we would get a lot more pressure. And I feel like we did get more pressure. It just didn't right. really result in sacks sometimes. Uh, yeah, that's totally accurate. Uh, yeah, that's so totally accurate. You, yeah, you both miss out you on both a both missed. There. All right, Kyle yeah, four, was, Jared three. It's it's tight. Um, so it, it it stays tight pretty much throughout the the entire thing as a spoiler, but you'll you'll see what happens there in the end. Um, team fumbles recovered. So this is Ohio State's defense recovering fumbles. The over under is okay. ten and a half. I I I I say one was under and two that I picked the under. Those are both correct. Yeah. So, yeah. That 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 uh, number feels big. Well, so it isn't. It isn't right because Ohio State recovered seven, which is still quite a bit. They only yeah. forced. I say only. They forced ten. So that number probably should have been how many did they force rather than how many did they recover. But yeah, it was it was well under, unfortunately. Um, did, I think you're gonna Kyle take. The, Kyle also took the under. So you you both ah. are correct. You're not gonna gain any ground on him here. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't even want to be right at this point. I just want to beat Kyle. Just want to beat Kyle. That's that's we'll the story of my life. <laughs> we miss you, Kyle, wherever you are. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> always wins. Like we don't know where he is. We know where Ky- he is. But that's yeah, like- yeah, no, yeah. He's. I said he's on assignment, but yeah. it's super secret assignment. Only the only the uh, CIA know where Ky- knows where Kyle's at right now. That implies we're in the CIA, but I'll move on. Uh, OSU final college football playoff ranking over under two and a half. Obviously, we know the answer. Their final college football ranking was four. Four. Yeah. Uh, you and you and Kyle both took the under, thinking they would either be ranked one or two. Unfortunately, it was over. So that's a yeah pretty easy one to keep track of. But I, I don't think it was a bad guy. I mean, if Ohio State beats Michigan, right. Ohio State's ranked two or one. So yeah, yeah. I. I, and for what it's worth, I legitimately think they're one of the two best teams in the country this past season. Yeah. Despite they, losing they to Michigan. Um, and of course, like you that was a 50 50 game with Georgia. There's there's an argument to be made. And listen, Georgia won fair and square. Georgia yeah, is yeah. A national champion. I acknowledge that I'm not taking yep. any of that away from him. There is an argument to be made that Ohio State was the best team in the country this year, and they're just not ready for that conversation. Right. Um, Gangland says, we said during the offseason that injuries were one thing that could hold this team back. That's true of all teams. Um, and it's just, it's, yeah. Honestly, had you, I would love to have known what I, how I would have answered that question among many of these other questions had you told me uh, Henderson would be banged up for the entire year and never be himself. Um, you're JSN. not going to have JSN for the entire season. Um, you aren't going to have, I don't know if we knew about Evan Pryor. Did, did we know about Evan Pryor? We did because otherwise, you know, how big of an Evan Pryor, Pryor fan I am. I would have had an over under about Evan Pryor. This is like the week that okay. we found out that he was going to be out, but, but still, you know, I mean, still um, losing your third running back versus losing your number one running back, your number two running back, your number one wide receiver. Like the, it hurts for sure. Yeah. So, um, but the man behind it all, CJ Stroud, uh, his numbers for interceptions this year, the over under was set at seven and a half. Ooh, I think that's probably a close number, but it's below it. I want to say he threw six or five. He did throw six, and you and Kyle both said under, so you're correct. So, yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it's like you can't gain any ground. That's the issue. Yeah, that's the issue. Kind of agree too damn much. It's a it's a problem that goes back to day one on this podcast. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get to some ones where you guys pick pick opposite ones, so we'll, we'll get there in a second. But this next one you guys also agreed on, uh, which is uh, Trey Henderson rushing touchdowns. Uh, mm. This one feels wrong because it, the number was nineteen and a half. Yeah, which he very well could have. Yeah, hit had he been healthy the whole year, you both went over, so you don't get a point. But the number was only six. Um, but that one feels not fair. Don't I'm still counting it against you. 
but yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does feel a bit unfair. Yeah. Um, so. I tell you what, if I were, I'm, I'm just saying this right now, if I were doing this, if I had done this for money, I would have taken the under, I think, mm. just because like you always have to equate for the possibility of injuries and all that. Hey, Jared, you want to hear something uh, a little funny? Sure. Branding. Branding? Yeah, look at the branding you have, Ripley. Oh. You know. Um, of course, now what? Uh, is this scarlet and gray? Is that what this is? Since we're grading my. It feels, it feels scarlet and gray. It feels scarlet and gray. Okay. I, that I, feels right. I was trying to fix some audio stuff before the show started, and. I just I did, wasn't even thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I guess this is a scarlet and grade. So we're welcome to scarlet and grade, everybody. Um, there we go. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed your time in uh, Sleep Cats only. Cause... Yeah, it's a secret preview. Secret preview yeah, of the secret. You, yeah, if you don't know what Sleep Cats only is, you can feel free to join us at discord.sleepcast.com. We can tell you all about it. Or you can just immediately join on patreon.sleepcast.com. Uh, become a patron and there's a secret Wednesday episode that uh, during the season uh, Kyle and Jared uh, come on we just talk about literally anything some things that you might want to talk about some things that you know are very interesting so uh, if you're we talked about that, public transportation this week it see that you're not selling anyone with that Jared. <laughs> that, that's part of the issue um, but if you're interested in that, come join us, uh, discord.thesloopcast.com and patreon.thesloopcast.com. Sometimes we start we about, good time. sometimes we, uh, talk about starting a cult. We, yeah, I, that was, that was this week, right? I think not actually yeah. starting a cult, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, I might just be like softening you guys up on the idea. <laughs> it always, right, cults always start as a joke. <laughs> Back to the football. Speaking of Colts, Ohio State football. Um, Ohio State longest touchdown from scrimmage on the season by yardage. Over under 85 and a half. Now, do you remember any big plays this season, Jared? I mean, yeah, but I don't think they hit an 85 plus. So it is Julian Fleming versus Iowa Gangland says. That's a really good guess. I think that that is the correct answer uh, for the longest play do you remember how long it was gangland if you had to guess he says 82, 82. that's a it's a really good guess the correct answer is 79 so it was under yeah. and what i thought was funny about this was jared went on a during the episode where you guys answered these uh these questions jared went on a whole I don't, not a ramble, but a whole, a whole talk about how, well, I'm not sure if Ohio State's ever going to get pinned back deep enough for it to be above 85. And uh, he made some really good points. So Kyle was like, you know what? I agree. I take the under. And then Jared just took the over anyways and got it wrong. <laughs> I'm so pissed at me right now. <laughs> Previous Jared, why didn't you listen to yourself? That's, that's where we're at. So yeah. So Kyle got a point there and Jared did not. So not only did I steal the point from myself, but I also gave the point to Kyle. Correct. Yeah, that's that's basically exactly what happened. I hope you, the viewers at home, are enjoying this because I know that I am. This is a this right, is a great on. episode if you hate me. <laughs> Can I get some Team Kyles in the chat? Team Kyles in the chat right down there. Uh, we're almost at, this is halfway through. So we are at uh, Xavier Johnson yardage. Now this was confirmed on the podcast to be all purpose. Okay. So okay. the over under was at 321 and a half. Okay. He went over that. You and Kyle, he went well over that. And you and Kyle both went under. Yeah. He had 269 yards. Nice. Uh, on just returns. And then 297 uh, through rushing and receiving. So for a total of 566. Did, so we did include return yardage. Yeah. Well, I, it's hard between, because we, you don't really, you don't ever really know who's going to be the returner as well. You don't ever. Yeah. You, you can't, you can't gamble that he actually was going to win the returning job and he didn't have the returning job the entire season. Um, no. You, who would have foreseen him taking as many 
snaps at running back as he did. Um, there were I mean, more peach. Well, he even had some reps at receiver as well. And in some other games he did as well with some, you know, with Marvin Harrison going out, Xavier Johnson was actually the next guy off the bench. Right. And, and he also got snaps. Um, uh, Mecca missed time. Julian Fleming missed time. He got a lot of snaps this year, a lot more than I think we were expecting. And honestly, he did a great job. Yeah. For, for someone who walked onto Ohio state, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter, which I know is a wasteland. However, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter talking about the fact that, oh my gosh, we have, we, we, oh God, we have this, these five-star talents sitting on the bench and we're playing Xavier Johnson. If he's the best player, he's going to play. Right. I, I, if you don't know this about me, I coach football. I am nowhere near the coach of Ryan day. I trust his judgment and his staff's judgment way more than I trust my own or any armchair coach as well. So if they think that Xavier Johnson deserves to play over those five-star guys, then he's earned it. He works hard. He's still super. I mean, you saw the spin move that he put on the peach bowl. The guy deserves to play. Sorry. Yeah. I love Xavier Johnson and I, I will not take any slander over X. No, I, I agree. And I think there is value in rewarding your practice players. Absolutely. I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't like that concept because they just think, well, if X is more, X is, I can't say X here because we're talking about Xavier as an example. If player B is, you know, more talented, then they should be playing over player C. But C gets more time because he's a good practice play and people get all pissy about that. Well, guess what? If you don't reward your practice players, no one's going to practice hard. No, and, and I guarantee you, Xavier Johnson has made a lot of the guys that play receiver at Ohio State better. From yeah. just showing up to practice and doing what he does. So all the guys that you're enamoring to get what well, you want them on the field right now because they're five stars and they're, they're going to be true sophomores this year. and They're going to be true juniors next year or whatever it might be. Xavier Johnson is mentoring those guys. Like that's a guy that you're going to see on the judge machine late at night. You're going to see him putting in work in you know, a film room. Like that's the guy you want in that room and you want him getting playing time so that he can show those younger guys, hey, this is how we do it at Ohio State. Yeah, so. and it's, you know, also consider that there's not a ton of, not at the beginning of the season anyway, a ton of leadership in that wide receiver room. No. You had Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave who both leave at the same time. That creates a leadership vacuum. That's what X was. So speaking of wide receivers though, Jared, uh, I have another unfortunate one for you. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba receptions at 91 and a half. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, just, we, we take the L we move on. Yeah. Do you want to, uh, so you both obviously said over the answer was under, uh, do you want to guess how many receptions Jason had this year? Do you know the answer? Four. Close. It was five. He had five yeah. receptions. Yeah. I think he had like two or three, maybe four against, uh, Notre Dame and he had one or two against Iowa when he yeah. came in and played that. So don't worry, gang, let him ahead of you. I got you. That was fun. <laughs> He played like two snaps against their name. Uh, no, I mean he got he got five catches. So I think he played. I think he played like the first half against their name. Did he not? Something I, I don't remember lines. specifically when he left, but yeah, he got five catches. So. Uh, not one that's near and dear to Kyle's heart. Uh, Ohio State defensive and special teams touchdowns at over under three and a half. I was reading the chat. Would you say that one again for me? Ohio State defensive and special teams touchdowns at three and a half. Okay. Um, no return touchdowns. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, Kyle. Um, there weren't. There was. There there was a blocked punt. Did it? I don't think it went for. Did it go for a touchdown? I don't. Um, so. There. A few block punts. I don't think any touchdowns from it. Gangland says I I think that's correct. Um, regardless, I think it's under. It is under you and yeah. Kyle did both say over. So you got this one wrong as well. Uh, the two touchdowns off the top of my head, I believe, were Tommy Eichenberg pick six. Yeah. And J JT against Willow Iowa pick six. Yeah. So JT and. Uh, Tommy Eichenberg with the two pick sixes. And those are the ones that went back for scores. Unfortunately, Ohio state still does not have a return touchdown. So that's, it's pretty sad. 
Uh, another one that ransom block two from what gangland remembers yeah n- neither did, of those went into the end zone sense. yeah so ohio state uh three receivers jackson smith and jigba marvin harrison jr and fleming total yards at 3409 and a half obviously we didn't get that it was right. well under with 1839 but that's with like 34 yards coming from jsn so fleming yeah. and uh, marvin harrison jr ended up with about 1800 yards between the two of them which is pretty good I wanted to see what the number would be if you included a Mecca Ibuka in those numbers instead of uh, yeah. Jason. It's, it still only comes up to 29.56, but you know, I think if you switch out, and no offense to Julian Fleming, he's a good receiver, but compared to Jackson Smith and Jigba, if you swap those two guys out, could have could have hit that number, but it was it was going to be hard even without the injuries. And then you know, yeah, and, yeah, and then you know, like like I already said, but for the sake of saying it, a Mecca Ibuka and uh Fleming also missed time this year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was guys that got yards, took those yards away from those guys. They could have hit that number. So uh but good news, Jared. You and Kyle finally got one right again, both of you though. So you, you God. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But so that it's eight to six now? It yep. is eight to six. Yeah. Okay. We haven't added any in a minute. So I wasn't sure. It's been, it's been a little while. So Ohio State sacks by defensive ends. Okay. It was 24 and a half. No. Got. It got a lot of pressure, got a lot of hurries. I will say this number was higher than what I thought it was going to be. Well, that's the thing. I almost just straight up said, no, 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 absolutely not. But then I started like doing a bit of the math and I think it's close closer than most people would expect it to be but not there didn't get that yeah, i will it, and i also say that i probably predicted an over on this you and kyle both predicted an over it was only 15 and a half so it was nine yeah. lower but you know in my head i'm thinking through the season and uh, before i looked at the number i was like oh it's probably like a 10 or 11 we didn't really get that many sacks in the defensive ends but i mean you gotta consider JT had that one huge game, you know, yeah. Sack Harrison. He had a pretty good game in the Peach Bowl, getting a couple sacks. And, you know, all that eventually adds up. And so they ended up uh, right after uh, 15 and a half. So, yeah. And um, Javante Jean Baptiste had a, a couple, a, a yeah. couple, a few. I Sawyer. Believe. Yeah. yeah. It all adds up. So, uh, this one, this next one is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, I think one of everyone's favorites, but it's, uh, Cam Bob touchdowns at uh, three and a half. Obviously, we all know it went under. But uh, Jared, again, a little bit of a uh, kudos to you. You said, and I quote, I really like to think that Bob gets a touchdown this year, at least one. <laughs> and sure enough, Bob got yeah. his, his one touchdown. So uh, you both did say under, so you both get a point. But shout out to Cam Bob. For sure. Um, bonus, uh, one, which, bonus segment. Uh, Sure. Um, who gets the zero next year? Who gets the block O? I so there's a couple options, right? You've who did who did Bob have it this year, right? Yeah, that's that's why I asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I th- think there's a really good chance it goes to Steel Chambers. That's you know Bulldog. You said I can. Who hurt. I think of. So, if he comes back, maybe, but I think he's going pro. If you're if you're making me guess who actually gets it, I'm probably going Eichenberg. I, I, and listen, I know this isn't going to happen, but just imagine a world where CJ Stroud comes back and gets the block. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I 100% know that. He's 100% yeah. gone. I get it. But yeah. if he does, for some crazy reason, decide to come back, he's 100% gets it. So, yeah. Xavier, Xavier Johnson, Johnson for block another good choice could very well be him. I think if, if everything goes as it's supposed to, and the people that we think are going to leave, leave and the people that we think are going to come back, come back. I think it ends up being between chambers and Johnson. Yeah. Um, Chambers is good one. Johnson's a good one. Um, Yeah. I'm not a hundred. I don't know if I have, I don't think I have like a hundred percent answer yet, but yeah, it's, I, I've personally been leaning steel. Now. I've personally been leading leaning steel. My, I don't know about Mayan. I mean, he he came back, but he's a true. I mean, he's a redshirt sophomore, so he 
I don't feel like he's done enough. Hasn't been like as vocal enough of a leader. Uh, Jones could get a Baco patch. Um, no offense to him. I don't <laughs> think he's getting it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, J- I, Jones, by the way, uh, well, uh, Whipler officially leaving Jones officially returning. Don't be surprised if Jones moves to center this year. That would be yeah the the more obvious move. I think you see probably Donovan Jackson, maybe at this point with all those guys leaving bump out to tackle um, very possibly, if not, he'll play left guard, but uh, bump out the tackle probably. And then we see Matt Jones playing center. So, it, well, I think I, ideally what Ohio state would like would be, I, I believe Matt Jones at center, Enoch Famahi at right guard and Donovan Jackson at left guard. Um, right. This is the a thing you're going to run into is, do we have the two tackles that are good enough to play out there? And I think I think they have a right tackle. I don't know if they have a left tackle, which is why you don't necessarily yep. know where Donovan Jackson's going to play. They I think they would rather he play at guard, but they're prepared to play him at tackle. Um, and if you want to yep. if you want more depth chart, uh, depth chart conversation, uh, I just released an episode with uh, the one and only Tony Gerdeman on Monday. Yeah, go watch Toby the goat. He's go go watch him. Can we get some Tony to really get some chat, please? Well. Oh, I forgot we have that little emoji. Go ahead and put that down there. I love being read. I don't know why Kyle doesn't use this more. I love being read above the chat, so I can just go like this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. I also don't know why no one's really listening. Mean. I guess I'll do it. God. <laughs> Uh, while you're doing that, Jared, I'll talk on the next one, which is uh, an interesting one at, at this point. And uh, it's Dallin Hayden carries at oh, 71 God. and a half. I know I went under on this. I know. So then it, it was well over. It was 111. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I and I, I probably went not only did I say under on this, I probably went on a huge rant about how the third running back at Ohio State never gets any carries and that this number is way too high. And I probably did a whole thing, probably blasting you for how outrageously high the number was. So Kyle said under and you said over. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you gained one on that one on Kyle. Okay. Hot. Yeah. See, self-deprecation sometimes isn't the best choice. <laughs> uh, uh, next one coming up. We're getting we're getting close to the end. We're on number twenty-two of thirty. Uh, CJ Stroud passing yards at four nine one nine point five, so four thousand nine hundred nineteen point five. Um, not much to talk about this one. He had a in terms of yardage, he regressed a lot this season. Not to say he didn't right. have skill, but I mean, just didn't throw the ball as much. Um, he ended up throwing, I think, a hundred and ten less passes than he did the year before. Right, which is kind of insane. Uh, so I would say up- a large part of that was that they were the defense played considerably better this year, so they didn't have to throw the ball as much. Um, For sure. On top of that, just, you know, not having he lost. He lost his. We don't talk about this enough. He lost his four top pass catchers from the previous season. Uh, We didn't know he was going to lose JSN at the beginning of the season, but he did. So Olave Wilson, JSN Rucker, none of all those were your four top pass receivers the year before, and he lost all four of them. Regression was going to happen. And again, the defense was better, so they didn't they weren't throwing the ball all, all over the yard nearly as much in the third and fourth quarters this year. Yeah, absolutely. And then we had another one with CJ right after that. Oh, by the way, you both said under, so you, you both get a point there. I don't know if I said that, but you both get a point. Nice. So then we've got uh, another CJ stat, which honestly, besides the one that I spoke about earlier, I'm pretty proud of this one, too, because you guys kind of laughed at me whenever I gave you this number and it ended up being extremely close. Uh, CJ Stroud rushing yards. The over under was 121 and a half. And the year prior, remember, he ended up with negative 20. So yeah. 121 and a half. Do you know where he landed? I'm going to say slightly over that. No, slightly under, but still. Uh, okay. he, he landed at 108, which pretty decent. I mean, 100. 28 more yards than he did the year before. Right. And you have negative 20 is a 
pretty significant amount. So no, not 119, unfortunately, Gangland. Uh, so you both, you and Kyle, also get a point for that one. All right. So we're on, we're on a little bit of a streak here. Let's see if it continues. We've got Kyle McCord touchdowns at four and a half. Okay. I don't know what I would have. I don't know what I would have said on this. Um, he did not throw that many. I mean, you're right. He didn't. I don't think he threw any. Uh, I was trying to. I was honestly trying to think of one. He, um, I, I, I believe he ran in a touchdown. I could be wrong, but he got one touchdown in the season. So he threw one, ran one, or no? He, I think he just had one total. Oh, okay. He had Is one to Ballard. Ballard. You're right. So that must have been his one touchdown. So yeah, he must not have yeah. for one. But yeah, so he had, he had one total. So okay. he had that one Ballard touchdown, the long one. And that was it. Uh, unfortunately, you and Kyle both took the over for some reason. So the presumption being that he was going to get more time because Ohio State was going to be up more and that they would they were going to pull CJ Stroud. And quite frankly, Maybe uh, if I if I'm if I'm going to criticize, I don't you know, I, Ryan Day is getting too much criticism thrown at him. So I hesitate to criticize, but I would have liked to have seen Kyle McCord get more late game. I would I think he should have pulled CJ Stroud sooner than he did in several games. Well, I think in even through the weekly over unders, we kind of talked a little bit about this, especially during the games where it was like, OK, we're playing Toledo, we're playing Arkansas State. Some of my questions to you guys were, were like, OK, how many snaps does Kyle McCord get? OK, how many? How many yeah. passes does Kyle McCord get? And it was always, always, always hitting the under. And it was like, man, it's because he's not getting in the game until there's only one drive left. You know, right. he's not getting in at the beginning of the fourth quarter when you're up, you know, 35, 42 points. Like you would hope and you would know that Arkansas State and Toledo aren't coming back from that. But, you know, and and part of it, I think, is that they knew that CJ had a decent chance to go get a Heisman and, right. and all those other things. But I also you know, think... I also think Ryan Day needed to learn how to trust his defense again. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think next year, because here's, here's the thing about the quarterback battle that people aren't, some people aren't understanding is that Devin Brown's not leaving. He's no, if he, if he wins the job, awesome. He's super excited. He's going to be the starter at Ohio state for the next two years. Right. At least. Sure. If he wants to stay longer than that, feel free. He's a really talented guy. If he loses the quarterback battle, okay, cool. I'm going to sit behind Kyle McCord for one more year, and then I'm the job's mine the year after that, and it will be. Because right. you know, I, I would assume I mean, he would have to battle uh, Keenholz, but I, you would you would hope after being in the system for three years that, or two years or however many years it would be, that you'd be able to win the job. And so, you know, if if Devin Brown wins and Kyle McCord leaves, that's a possibility. But right. Um, and uh, I say it, all that to say that I I would hope that Devin Brown gets more snaps this year than Kyle McCord got last year. I would say probably not. And I base that off of Kyle McCord needing snaps. Sure. Uh, I just think they're not going to pull him very quickly because they're going to want him to get as many snaps under his belt, you know, during the lighter portion of the schedule, you know, especially like those two games leading up to Notre Dame. They're going to want to make sure he's as ready for that as possible. So those would be prime games for him to leave early, and they probably won't let him leave early because he needs the game snaps. See, but it, it, it feels a little six in one hand, half dozen in the other, because it's the exact opposite of sort of what happened <laughs> this year, where it's like, well, CJ Stroud knows what he's doing, and he's played in so many games. We're going to leave him in there anyway, so who knows what they're going to do. But so. th those were for different re the, the right. Heisman thing. Absolutely. The learning to trust his defense again thing. I, I think those were other motivating factors. Those are different sure. factors. Play Brown right, against dude. Youngstown State. Probably not. Youngstown State. I have my Youngstown State scarf somewhere. So, uh, Amount of players with a receiving touchdown, Jared. The number was 10 and a half. Amount of players with a receiving touchdown, 10 and a half. It went over. I think it went way it over. It did not go over. The answer is no? 10. Oh, okay. Only 10 players got a receiving touchdown. You got to think JSN didn't get one. So that's one player off the board. I think you know, well, I was you, thinking. You consider... G so I think you had at least two tight ends. Did G Scott yeah, get a Scott, touchdown this year? Scott Scott got one and uh, Stover got one. Yeah. Uh, I think Rossi only got him on the ground. Correct. Um, 
So then you got then Xavier one, Johnson. two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess I'm running out of receivers pretty quick. Um, yeah. I can only think of one to a running back. It's not to say there weren't, but I can only think of the Henderson touchdown. Um. So, yeah, I guess not. Yeah, I mean, you, you probably aren't thinking of Ballard, so you add one for that. So you got, you know, Xavier Johnson and Mecca Buka, Julian Fleming, Marvin Harrison, Ballard, um, Cam Bob, two of the tight ends, and then two running backs, and that puts you at, that puts you at 10 right there. So I'm going to say I predicted over. Uh, yeah, that, that's correct. You and Kyle both said over. So I, again, I expected, I expected Ryan Day to put the backup offense in much sooner than he ended up doing. And, and who's the other running was, back with a catch? I don't think there was one. I think it was only Trey, uh, we, we uh, I, but receivers. I could be wrong as well. Uh, yeah, I didn't write down exactly who got each one, but it was. Yeah. Um, so that kind of goes into a little bit what you're just talking about, Jerry, with, with the next one, which is Ohio State total passing attempts, which the year before. I think well, it was reduced. Like, it, was, it was like. Yeah, it was well reduced. I think the year before it was like 530 something or 540 something. And so this year was uh, I put the number at 517 and a half and it was well, well under. So uh, yeah. it was 409 and you and uh, you and Kyle both got that correct. So, yeah, I think we were not anticipating not as much late game throwing. All right. Kyle, 12, Jared, 11. I'm mm-hmm. still. I still needing to see you You say, oh, you guys were actually pretty close. It's because we agreed too damn much. <laughs> well, uh, this is a good one for you, uh, Jared. See if you know the answer to this one. All right. Ohio State team fumbles lost. OK. Six and a half. I'm going to say I think it went under than that. I don't think they lost that many fumbles. So we lost four fumbles. So it was under. But how many times do you think we fumbled throughout the season? Uh, I think we had a, I think we, I think there were many fumbles. I don't think many of them were lost. I think there were a few went out of bounds, few that recovered right away. Um, I don't, I I don't know what the number was, but I, I I think there were a fair number of fumbles, just not lost fumbles. So Ohio State actually forced the same number of fumbles as they fumbled themselves. So it was, they fumbled 10, lost four. Okay. So not too bad. And you and uh, Kyle do both get a point for that one. So, okay. 13 12. Not too bad. Now there's only three questions left. Um, so. Okay. And it's, we'll save that one for last. Uh, let's go <laughs> OS, OSU team rushing yards per game. Rushing yards per game. One and a half. Okay. I'm going to say they're slightly over that. They're actually pretty substantially over that at 192 and a half. It was between I mean, the number and 200. Game. Sure. Yeah, that's the way to look at it, I guess. <laughs> um, so it was over, and you and Kyle both went over. So you both get a point for that one as well. Okay. Do I even have a chance to pass him at this point? So Pat, yeah, yeah, there's two, there's two left. Yeah, but what are the chances we disagreed on both of them? I mean, you only have to disagree on one to tie. I didn't CJ's- want to tie. CJ Stroud completion percentage. Okay. Over under 73.1. 73.1. Uh, I'm going to say he went under that. That was a pretty lofty number. He did go under that. Yeah. Uh, by a quite a bit. 66.3. He regressed in terms of completion percentage this year as well, which is Could makes sense. You're losing your, yeah, you're losing your best receivers. And you even mentioned that on the... Uh, on the podcast, you, you were talking about how, well, he's losing, you know, some sure-handed receiver. He's losing Wilson. He's losing Alave. Like, you know, he, it's, it's going to be a little bit tougher for him. Um, and then you still went over. So. God damn me. <laughs> Fortunately for you, Kyle agreed. So you both don't get a point. So. I, so the best I can do is tie him. Best you can do is tie. And this last one was pretty close. Um, I'll go ahead and say the bonus one, which is, of course, the amount of dams we get for the whole state of Michigan. It was at a half and you both said under. So I'll give you a, a free point for that one. So you can both have a point okay. just, just to bump up those totals a little bit, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Thanks, Spikes. So that, yeah. 
So last one, Ohio State sacks allowed on the season. Okay. okay. Can, uh, the number Do Kyle and I differ is what I need to know. The number was 14 and a half. Okay. How many did they give up? It's under that. I think they only allowed like six or seven going into Georgia. Then they had a few against Georgia. But I'm going to say it's under that. So it is under. It's it's 12. And, and part of what you talked okay. about, which ended up being very... It, actually, Kyle talked about this a little bit more, was that they had an entire offensive line last... Not last season, but the 2022 season... The 2021 season, excuse me, uh, about how they had an entire offensive line of tackles. You know, they yeah. had one center. Remember, that was the year they had four tackles at the two tackles in the guard spots. And... Kyle was like, well, they're going to regress in pass blocking. So, you know, right. they're, they're definitely going to go. They're definitely going to go over. So Kyle did take the over. Okay. Um, and good news for you. You also took the over. Well, so why you would you do that? To Kyle by a point. Well, why would you do that to me? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you and Not, Kyle, here, here's, one, here's, here's the bullshit, <laughs> Austin. Here's the bullshit. Because you also you also said, eh, I'm gonna save this one for later. You, <laughs> you you specifically picked one out and said, I'm gonna save this one for last. And yep. I assumed it was for dramatic effect because Kyle and I differed. No, it was because it was one of my better numbers. You've never have given you power. Um, and, uh, I don't know why you believed him, Spike says. <laughs> so uh, I, I brought the receipts. Thanks for uh, going through that with me. So yeah, Kyle ends up with 15 points. You end up with 14. Um, so it was really close. You both did okay. Not quite 50%, but well, yeah, not quite 50%, but still, still pretty good, I would say. Still mad at you. That's fair. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was... Those are the uh, season long over under receipts. So thank you guys. So, for, uh, okay, hold on. Final score this. was 15, 14. And what, what was the total again? With the, uh, not giving a damn about Michigan, it was uh, 31. So it was 32. If I'm trying to like, no, it, was we're, we're, it was 30. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, you know, oh, don't worry. I, I have, I have something in the, in the attic. Uh, getting one. Yeah, okay. Before game you end the show, game one 2023. What does eleven and a half catches? One, Indiana. No, I think it's, no? it's 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 two cupcakes, the, the Notre Dame, right? Yeah, I, I, Indiana. I said what I said. <laughs> no, like cupcake cupcakes. Not big yeah, ten Notre cupcakes. Is, the third game, or, or the, is it like it's, I don't know, Kent State and Youngstown State. That sounds something like that. Yeah, I I I, I don't remember. It is Indy. Okay. You were right. Look at me. Everything's coming up Austin today. You know. Uh Jared, I have one more thing for you. Um okay. in Austin's attic before we uh before we close out the show, if that's all right. Okay. Is it a body? Uh it, your, your dead body, yes. Um, so I've got... I, I also saw something on Twitter, which again, I know, cesspool, I get it. You know what's much better than Twitter? Discord.thesloopcast.com. But I've been saying that. Always um, be plugging. So I have... Always be plugging. I have a... Uh, I've been seeing this list on Twitter today of Ohio State quarterbacks of the past, like, 15, 20 years. Okay. And uh, just, off the top, just off the top of your head, I want you to rank these quarterbacks in terms of how much you would want them on your team. Just right off the top of your head. There's like eight of them. All Ohio State quarterbacks. Can I, can I, uh, I ranking, I'd have to keep track of numbers. Can I, can I, oh, okay. Oh, you, you put it in the chat. That like helps. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it in there for you. I had it, I had it ready. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for for now. If you say them, I'll type, I'll type them in. Yeah, I might get fired after this episode. <laughs> Um, Justin Fields, one, CJ Stroud, two, 
Dwayne Haskins three. And, and I'm just going to acknowledge I have like a pro style quarterback bias. That's just sure. what I would prefer. Um, I'm going to go. I am going to go Braxton here. Okay. Um, then Troy Smith. Then Cardell Jones, JT Barrett, Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor last. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I, feel I like don't feel like he always had his. Are... I don't feel like he always had his head in the game, if I'm being honest. I feel like that's one of the most important things you 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 need for a quarterback is mental preparation. And I I don't think he always had his his head in the game 24 7, 365, the way you kinda maybe not 365, but you know, for for four or five months. Um and and I don't yeah, think was, he was was that. If we're talking I, physical I tattoos, yeah. I don't care about the tattoos. I mean, in, in all honesty, none of that is is one a big deal. Two, most importantly, why Ohio State got in trouble. Ohio State got in trouble because Trussell lied about it because he knew and he yep. covered it up. Um, but anyway, um, Oof, gang, I think Shroud over Fields is a oh boy. All right, I don't. I think I don't, Fields has to be number one on this list, I think. I think it's a conversation. I think it's a conversation. Sure. And I think that's a huge compliment to CJ Stroud, quite frankly. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's. Yeah, I just you have to have your head in the game as a quarterback, I, I think, is is my primary issue with Terrell Pryor. I think. I, I think All right. if we if we're talking pure athleticism, if we're talking just that, he's probably on my list, but probably third or fourth. I'd probably bump him yeah, up to I, third I, or fourth if we're talking about physical gifts. I think you're definitely taking Justin Fields and um Braxton Miller over him in terms of just athleticism. Definitely. Like, I don't think there's any argument there, but he, anyways, he's, that, that, he's so. even in the conversation, I would say to surpass Stroud, if we're talking pure physical oh, yeah. gifts. Um, but again, like I, I think there's a whole lot of off the field you need to do in order to be a great quarterback. And I don't think he always put that work in. Uh, Jared Wasteland episode, which if, for those of you that don't know, we, we consider the Wasteland the time after spring ball until uh, about fall camp rolls around. Uh, just episodes talking about random Ohio State stuff or even national football stuff. Um, we're going to have a, an episode where uh, there will be a... Uh, well, don't don't talk about that. Don't, don't, don't talk about, oh, oh, don't oh, talk oh, about oh, that. Oh, I don't oh, want anyone to oh. steal that idea. Yeah, you're right. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good Anyways, idea. We're gonna be, Don't advertise that. It is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut that part out. Uh, Kyle and post. Because <laughs> Kyle does all the editing. Yeah, um, right. Anyways, all, all that will be uh, happening in the wasteland. So make sure you tune in that time too. Some some stuff in the works, basically. Um, and that, yeah, yeah. That's all I got. Jared. I tell you what, we're, we, we also want to do this wasteland, um, a new series called Die on This Hill, um, where we will invite not just Austin, uh, to but other people from our Discord server to uh, come on the show, give a controversial hot take, and then defend it. That'd be a good time. I I, I think I think at the very least at the very least, and if it's not, I'll I'll just make fun of the person. Which is also, I mean, you guys saw what I did this episode. That's that's basically yeah, more fun. Yeah, I, I I need I need revenge. <laughs> Right, I've been bullied and now I need to do some bullying. That's, I mean, I, I honestly don't blame you. So. <laughs> That's how that works. All right. Uh, that was Austin's attic. Uh, we plugged the discord. We plugged the Patreon um, uh, t-shirts. Uh, you can get 
t-shirts at uh, 7071.thesloopcast.com, which is a bunch of just like Ohio stuff. And there's uh, just merch.thesloopcast.com, which is Ohio, not Ohio State stuff. L- lawyers, chill. Be very, clear. Be very o- o- OSU legal. It's not Ohio State stuff. But it is it is Sloopcast stuff that uh, features a familiar color pattern. A familiar color pattern and the shapes of a, a, a state in particular. So um, it's a state and that state is Ohio, but it's not Ohio State. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Austin, do you want to you want to pick the music on the way out? I'm never going to say no to playing the vapors. So OK. Playing the vapors is what it'll be. Do I want to pick a song? Yeah. Pick a song. Um, everyone uh, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, again, you can go to youtube.thesloopcast.com. That's our YouTube channel. Um, but most people watch us, um, which is totally fine by me, uh, over on the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel. Uh, so if you subscribe to that, you don't just get our podcast. You get a bunch of fantastic content from Buckeye Huddle, um, including player interviews, uh, podcasts from Tom Orr and, and Tony Gerdeman and a bunch of the wonderful people over at Buckeye Huddle. Um, do you have anything yet, Austin? Do I need to keep talking? We're on oh, all yeah, of your no, favorite. I have, I have a, uh, okay, go ahead. Hey. Okay, I, I, I was just va- I was just vamping to give you time to find a song. Listen, because I'm a fucking like professional. Yeah. Professional, obviously, yeah. Uh, one more thing, because Jared, I don't think ever says this too much. Sometimes he does, but leave a comment on the YouTube video. Give it a like. Like we we. The algorithm is a real thing, and it would be really nice to get the, these videos out to some more people. So you're I, you're sitting there on your phone, you're la- you're you're laying on your bed. Your phone is underneath your hand. It takes like two seconds to just scroll, type "Hello, Jared." Yeah, it doesn't just even do it, please. It doesn't even have one. Even just just hit the like button, and the comment doesn't even have to be like intelligent. You you can no. seriously uh go, go into your emoji keyboard, give me a thumbs up, then put an ellipsis. And then then flip me the bird. That, that If you don't know what else to leave a comment, just leave that comment on the YouTube channel. Thumbs up. Uh, just kidding. And then that that's your comment. So doing that. See, Spikes is already on board. Or you could even make fun of Harbaugh, which is, you know, always a fun thing to do. So I tell you what, if, if you're if you, all right, here, here's here, maybe we should do a question at the end of each episode and people can answer the question in the comments. How many? This is this is a favorite one on the Discord. It's, it's also if you want a preview of what exactly we Classic. do in the Discord, it's this shit. How many hot dogs could Harbaugh fit in his pockets? Um, now we can't do like it was. This has led to a lot of like back and forth Q and A's. So let me just answer some of the common ones. Um, they are his game khakis. Um. You can use all four of the pockets. He can use all four of the pockets. Um, they, yeah, they have to remain intact. We, you cannot like puree. No cargo pockets is his game khakis. He's, you got four pockets. Um, there's no like pureeing or crushing to make room for more hot dog. They have to be intact hot dog. If they if the hot dog gets squeezed or deformed a little bit, that's fine. But if you pierce the skin of the hot dog, that's no longer a hot dog. For the sake of this argument, does this include the buns? No, no, no. Pure hot dogs. I want. So, what's interesting about this is this this kind of stuff we usually talk about after we click end recording. So, <laughs> let's uh let's let's go ahead and get to that, Jared. Let's, let's no, do, uh, we we aren't talking about this. The people in the comments are talking about this. This is for right. them. We've had we've had this argument in the Discord server already. It's, it's true. Um, are these ahead. broken in or new khakis? They, I tell you what, the reference are the khakis he was wearing against TCU. Th- those are your reference. Look at the look at the game vid against TCU. That's 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 your point. That that's your uh, reference point. Point of reference. Yeah. Point of reference. All right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Um, Austin, what what song are we doing? Uh, we're going to listen to a new direction by Plain Vapors. All right. So. Uh, you already heard Austin say it. So with uh, all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is New Direction by Playing Two Vapors. Mm-hmm.